What is up, people of the planet? Osiris here with Osiris Gaming, and we are doing it again on Path of Exile. Expansion came out, and we are doing episode number three, I believe. Uh, now, I was posting my other episodes the other day, and I realized that I forgot something quite important, which was this little uh, area right here uh, in the submerged passage called the Flooded Depths. Uh, inside the flooded depths is going to be a one of those big crab little shooter guys that kind of have a two stage part uh, and the only reason that we need to do this side quest is because it gives us a passive point and I can't believe I forgot it yesterday so sorry about that guys don't do that on your characters you're going to want that passive point although it's not all that important as long as you're doing okay with your character you can simply come back like I'm doing it and get it later uh, it should only even be easier and quicker at that point. Now, I'm not going to try to kill too many mobs here because they don't grant me nearly as much experience as things that I'm currently attacking in the other area. Now, we don't want that bridge, that little landmark I was telling you guys about. If you find the bridge, that means you probably went too far. And we need to find the hole in the ground. There it is, guys, like I promised. Hole in the ground. Alrighty, so we're just going to skeet around here a little bit. And eventually we're going to find our target. We're going to obliterate our target and get out of Act 1 once again. Not going to lie, I was playing a little bit of a different character after recording yesterday. Because I just wanted to, you know, play without you guys. You know, I have a life too. And sometimes it's fun to be without you. But... Uh, it was not fun. You want to know why? Because this character is awesome. Uh, the Frost Blades is it's far superior to uh, what I was using yesterday, which was Freeze Pulse, trying to get up to a Whirling Blades character. You guys will probably see him once he's actually where he should be. Um, I did end up getting Whirling Blades at the very end of it, but I haven't really messed around with it too much to figure it all out. Grab that scroll. We're not greedy couple other things while we're running around here that I realized later on uh, the stash currency tab uh, bought that because didn't know it was a thing uh, it's amazing we'll touch base on that once we hit uh, so the encampment again uh, so they did add uh, eight slots to that page to account for the new uh, shards currency that the harbingers are dropping um, let's find out what we're missing here there it is um, so it's really awesome. You all your currencies in one tab. It's only seven dollars and fifty cents. Although of course you have to buy it in five or ten dollar increments. Uh, it's so worth it. Like, I mean, all your currencies on one tab. It auto stacks infinitely, and it just makes everything so much easier. And you don't have to spend pretty much any time organizing your stash for a considerable amount of time because you don't have all those currencies just floating around anymore. So if you guys haven't done that, the currency stash tab, go ahead and go down to this little microtransaction shop down there. Give yourself 10 bucks on your account and go ahead and purchase that. It's going to do it's going to do wonders for your exploration. Wow, this has got to be the longest flooded depths I've ever been in here. I just get all the anomalies with you guys. Wow, and a dead end. Alright. Good thing we've got that 20% movement speed on our boots. So that we can run through this even quicker. And let's pull up the map and find out what else. Let's see, there's a little thing in that bottom left corner. We're going to have to go all the way around to get to that. So let's do it. It is morning where I'm from, so if you guys hear a loud clack on the table, get over it. It's my coffee. Can't live without it. Mm. So good. I haven't had coffee made at home in forever, because I always get it for free at work. I miss the quality. So good. Alright, we're coming up here. This is the guy. He's a big scary monster. Look how quick he's dying. And that was pretty much it. Alright, so we're just going to go right back to town. And go talk to the dude necessary to give me the tome to get me a passive skill point. 
Thank you, Tarkley. I'm assuming that's how you say your name. It's kind of funny. I've actually played this game for years, and I literally never read the NPCs' names, uh, except for Nessa. Everybody knows Nessa. There we go. Quest complete. Got the skill point. Let's go ahead and pop that right into there. Winter Spirit. We just got a bunch more of our physical damage converted to cold. Let's take a look one more time at this ability, Frost Blades. So look, it's got an additional, it's got 60% right there that's going to change into cold damage already. We just got another extra 20%. Now we're up to 90% of our damage is completely cold. We'll take care of basically the other 10% later. I uh, can't remember right off the top of my head. My path of building is actually is down right now. I'm going to have to open that up. But first we're going to get back into Act 2. And we're going to go ahead and kill the right side bandit. So we actually have crossroads. Come on, Osiris. Get your head in the game. There we go. Skip a little content there. And keep on running here. Real quick, I'm going to pull up my path of building. Because that's going to... Help me figure out what the heck I'm doing. Alrighty. Looks like Blade Vortex is up right now, so we're gonna go back to Frost Blades. And true. It's still not doing it, so we'll deal with that in a second. I know basically where I'm going on the tree for now. And if I mess up, we can always use some of those passive unspec points to get it back. So just keep on running, you'll come into the broken bridge if you just follow the path. Stay on the path and you're golden. This one you also should probably stay on the path and you're pretty much golden. It'll take you right to the bandit. There's uh, usually a shortcut as this one does tend to curve completely around the map. Um, if you usually just go like straight east even though I know we're kind of dealing at a slanted north, south, east, west here. Um, if you just go this like general direction this way you usually run right into them. <clears throat> yeah, that's the kind of experience I'm looking for. So we're going to grab this waypoint. Boom. Waypoint successful. And just continue our way over here. we got a blue pack and a rare pack. kind of interesting. I actually enjoy having, you know, people watching and people to talk to while I'm playing because I pay attention a lot more, I feel like, even though I'm having to do two things at once, uh, I notice a lot more on the ground, like the chromatic orb pieces and all the other little things that drop that you don't really notice every time. Because on my other character, I have, I did not find nearly as much awesome stuff. Wow, that was... That was a lot of stuff. All right, let's see if there's anything useful. I didn't think so. Nope. But we'll throw them all in the bank. Nothing's completely unuseful in this game. Damn, monkey. This ain't your place. It's supposed to be in the jungle. This is, this is open. What kind of trees are you going to climb in here? What, this one tree here that hasn't burned down with the rest of its friends? I don't think so. Alrighty, we've got to the abandoned camp number one of three. We're going to just come in here and act like it's our own, pimp slap a few homies and be on our way. Should we help you? No, we're going to kill you. And all your friends, too. Because if you're going to kill someone, you might as well kill all their friends. They're going to be depressed if he's gone, so you can end the depression train by just taking out every single person that they know. That's what we're planning on doing here. really not putting up much of a fight at all. Either that's because this character is really good or I'm a little bit over leveled for this area maybe. Who knows. But that was not over but shockingly easy still. Take his amulet. Kill the rest of his friends. And we're done here. We're just going to teleport back to save us some time. And let's take a look-see real quick. 
All right, we're actually going to cut away for two seconds so I can get Path of Building up and running. So give me one second, guys. All right, and we're back. We're going to go ahead and go to the crossroads and take care of this last little section on the right side here. Like all the other ones, you can simply just follow the path. It should take you pretty much right to it. Look at that. That was quick as heck. We're already at the shrine. We're going to go here and just do it super fast. It shouldn't take us too long to get through this. Oh, a silver coin. Looked way cooler than it really was. I'm going to have to start activating some of those prophecies soon just so I can get some extra good baddies going on. Now you might be wondering, why am I skipping all these guys right here when I could be getting experience from them? And it's pretty much because I'm doing so well on this character. Um, like, look at this exile. He's like, he doesn't even know what to do. He's so weak. Um, I want to get past all this stuff, and if I can handle things that are much tougher, they're going to drop much better experience and items. So, if you find that the areas around you are just too easy and stuff, just go ahead and get to the areas that aren't, and you'll do a lot quicker uh, leveling. And that's what we're planning on doing, because I want to catch up to, uh, to the person I... Shout out Elias yesterday, and I actually did end up catching up to him, and then he continued playing, and I started a different character, so I didn't have to record, and now he's way ahead of me again. So we got a lot of work to do today, guys. I know he's playing probably right now as well, but I also know his character is not doing quite as well as mine is anymore. Getting into that new content, there's... There's a, apparently a boss that's guaranteed to kill you 20 times. I'm pretty excited to get there. See how good I can do against it. I did get a chance to ask him about his chromatic pieces. I know I talked about that in an episode or two back. And I was so right. He had the exact same number of chromatic pieces. Yet he was like 15 levels and 3 acts ahead of me. Um, which proves that... You definitely need to keep an eye on the ground, guys, because you're going to find most of your chromatic pieces through selling items. Wow. They usually just make this like a one hallway thing, but apparently they've got to turn and get in here. There we go. Well, I will kill you because you're rare. Almost a chromo piece. I really like this area, guys. This is like one of my favorite of the first, uh, over the second act, I mean. I love how this temple looks. And that there's a waypoint right there, so we can always just get right back. In case we make a fool of ourselves, which I'm not planning on doing. Spiders? Spiders? Someone get the bug spray! Like, they don't seem to be doing much damage to me, but they definitely can take a beating. Oh, we got one of these guys. I haven't seen them in so long. Oh, you freaking got in a skeleton before I could kill you. I don't remember them even doing that. Oh, and this guy's fractured. See, this is when Frost Bomb. Uh, would really come in handy. Uh, I think I actually do have Frost Bomb now, but I don't know if I have the stats required to use it yet. My character hasn't really rounded out. But as soon as we can, with guys like that, you can just drop the Frost Bomb on them, lower their resistance by 20%, and just start, and just start doing tons more damage to them. see that there's a book over there. Is that a trial? Definitely it is a trial. We want to be hitting all these trials so that we can get through that labyrinth uh, as soon as possible. I hear there's a lot of good stuff in it still and that they actually updated it so they made it a little bit easier or harder. I honestly don't remember what my friend said but either way they've done changes so I need to make sure that I'm on, on point with it. Lever number one completed. Ooh, that was a little too 
too much there. Uh, okay, got to run through here, I believe. Through here. Um, through here. Oh, through here. And here. Oh, oh, oh. Here. Yep, that's one. Oh, 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 oh. Nice. That one was actually fairly uh, long for just a little trial. But made through all the same. Let's take a look at where we're going here. All right. I think we're doing good. And I got that skill point down. I got to use that. Gotta pick up the rest of that frost wheel. Oh. Can't you guys give me some pace? Jeez. What does this one do? Increase cold damage, projectile speed, and increase chill. That all sounds pretty yummy to me. We're gonna get to it. We're not too far. Let's find out what our little tooltip DPS is. 141. That's pretty good. My freeze pulse was doing ridiculous amounts of damage early on. It's quite a strong ability if you're just making a character and you need to throw a starter gem on there just to get them to where you need them. Uh, and it's spell based. Freeze pulse is is the way to go, my friends. Uh, it does crazy amounts of damage, really fast casting speed, uh, generic wise, and it doesn't take too much mana either. It's a pretty easy one to kind of just like slowly click health potions through while you're chipping away at it. Uh, it, it goes through people so you can hit like entire uh, mobs in a line. It's not quite as expansive as this frost blades uh, but it does it does a lot of damage. Alright dead end there. best thing about frost pulse in my opinion is its ability to kill barrels actually you can just go over to like something like this and just shoot through all of them whereas with this one it doesn't even seem to activate the projectiles when I hit it with my melee and that kind of sucks and you know you see this big spike but it doesn't seem like the spike actually oh that's funny there's a master next to a rogue exile one of you at a time you can't all have me an awesome little iguana on the floor. Look at that. That's cool. I don't think I've ever seen an iguana so detailed. Come on. There we go. Look at that. Look how good Grinding Gear Games is getting at making models. Like, you should see their first models. Go ahead and look up, like, Path of Exile 1.0. This is not the same game in the slightest. Ugh, this is, like, my least favorite of the hunters. I looks like he's pulling me quite far away from my goal which is annoying as heck I'm guessing that they're gonna be over here it's the only area I haven't really killed everything more and more spiders Alright, looks like I'm still not finding what I need here. It says hunt down the infected beasts. I'm not finding any infected beasts here. You'll not, oh, there it is. Right when I was about to be like, and eh, I'm going to give up on it. Wow, quite a bunch of things in here with the beasts added on top of the regular mobs here. I'm going to back out a little bit to ensure our safety. Because when those things charge up, if you actually let like six of them hit you, it's Oh, like that. It's definitely enough to put someone in a grave. Oh! Man, there's a boss in there, too. Alright. Take him down slowly here. This guy's accurate as heck, too. Ooh, Contagion. I thought it was a white gem. I was like, what the heck? That's supposed to be blue. Man, I'm seeing a lot of almost... Oh, there he is. Holy crap. Mutated Watcher. Um, seen a lot of almost chromo pieces. Not nearly as many actual chromo pieces as I found yesterday, which might prove my theory on 
finding more valuable items in Act 1 to convince people to continue playing this game. Someday a Grinding Gear member will watch this and answer my question. Okay, looks like there are 12-ish left or so. Man, I can't believe I'm having to explore this whole thing looking for these guys. Alright, well there can only be one area that they're in, which is either going to be up here, down where we need to go, which it didn't point me in that direction. But it can only point in the most heavily concentrated area to be honest. So, <clears throat> at this point it could be <clears throat> sorry, could be anywhere. The only way to really find out would be go back to her. Normally she puts these little nodes on the ground that give you updates on the location of your hunt, but I uh, didn't seem to be lucky enough to get that style. Maybe that's an update. Oh, there's an Okay, so it's that way. If it's that way, it means it's right here, guys. That sucks. I'm gonna have to go all the way around. See, I wouldn't know that if the blue was gone. I'd rather been like, that's all explored. Oh man, what the heck? Ugh, they just put it over here. All right, take them out real quick. Be done with this person. Sweet. Which teleports to you now, which is so useful. And we will continue. Make sure we're even going somewhere here. We are. We're going to get to the next level. Number two. <clears throat> Already almost up another level, guys. We are burning through the content here. And especially the levels. That's why I'm liking this character so much. It seems to be definitely keeping up the clear speed I was hoping that it was going to have. <clears throat> it's honestly, it's conserving mana a lot better than I expected. And I'm not taking nearly as much damage as I thought I would be at this point in the game. Which is all good. Everything I said is, is a plus to this. I haven't really found too many downsides besides having to keep an eye on your positioning to make sure you're not just sending your projectiles into a wall. This ability definitely seems to be pretty well thought out. It does seem insane to me that one game can come up with so many different ways of doing uh, one ability. like. There's so many abilities in these games, and they're all pretty different. I mean, some of them have some similarities and stuff like that, but they're definitely different enough where it's like, oh, well, I want to make a build out of this, so I need to go this direction instead. And I really commend the Grinding Gear Company for coming up with so many different style of attacks. The only thing these games miss is like a healer or I mean yeah there's like tanky classes where they just don't do much damage they're just there to take the hate take the face hits um, but since there's no real aggro system in this game that's kind of hard to do so instead they just make everyone a badass usually and by doing that everybody can play on their own or in groups and just increase your group badassery but I often, you know, in WoW I played a healer a lot, uh, I did go shadow for a while, but I mainly did discipline, uh, and when I wasn't doing that I was usually a tank. I just like kind of, you know, either being the lead in a group or the person who's keeping them all alive, so I have large say. Because um, honestly, it's probably a trust issues that I have, you know. If, uh, if I'm not the tank or the healer, then usually we die, and I have to blame somebody. It can't be the DPS, because... DPS, they don't do anything, they just attack and not die. But this game will probably never have a healing role or even really a fully support role, except for people walking around, they have uh, a ton of auras on, which are really nice if you have a friend that's trying to level a support role uh, for more endgame content and mapping. 
really nice to have those guys around. Okay, I didn't have to kill all those guys. I only need two of them, so let's just go ahead and run these guys back. I only need two, and I have four, and there are like six more behind me. Looks like one negative guy is following me, which is kind of funny if you see it on my map over there. Should disappear once I get these guys here. Perfect. Had to do it because it's the first time seeing him. And now we can continue on our way. Either this is the right way. I think it is because of the staircase here. That's one of those one of those things you gotta keep your eye out for. straight to it. Let's just get her done. Yeah, told you. Definitely the area. Whoa! That guy looks awesome. I wonder if that is completely new. I bet it is. Let me know in the comments below, guys. Is this guy brand new to this patch, or has he already been here for a patch or two? Either way, he literally just bent over and took it that was that was sawed all right we're done with here we're gonna get out this was a little bit of a side area for us so it's not too important to get her done um, oh but you get a jewel so I'm really glad I did it uh, we are looking for a specific jewel I don't believe I'm gonna be finding it anytime soon here it's a fight for survival uh, and although these do, okay, so let's just read these real quick. We've got uh, mana regen per second, elemental damage. We've got 20 dexterity and elemental resistances and 10% increased physical damage and 50 to armor. Now, I believe the elemental damage is going to be uh, the best because we obviously are going full on cold. I don't even have a slot for this on my tree yet. That's for the second quest. Um... So I don't know if I'm going to be able to utilize it. Let's go ahead and pull up the tree since I can add a point and claim that freeze fla or flash freeze. Let's see here. Now that gave us about 20 DPS, which is quite considerable. That's really nice. I'm glad I grabbed that. The closest one that I think I'm going to be getting is this little guy right here. And to get that, I'm going to have to get into herbalism, which is always good because it increases your health and how much your potions do to you so that's all good and good we're done with the crypt we're done with the pretty pretty much the entire right side here um, even though I didn't get the chamber of sins thing there this is just the den you don't need to do that and there is no other waypoints so we're just gonna talk to our masters we're gonna sell through our stuff and I think we're gonna end this episode because we're hitting close to the 30 minute mark and I I really want to keep these episodes a little shorter for you guys so you can go through them and I can get them up for you guys quicker because uh, upload times are are a real thing. Uh, I don't know if you've ever tried to upload a video to YouTube, but it takes it takes a long time. So we're going to we're going to pick through this stuff. It looks like I have an upgrade or two. And we will catch you guys next time. All right, this is Osiris with Osiris Gaming. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button below. Subscribe for more.